sometimes with everybody else dropping out, quitting, and living the way of the world, why can't I also live like the world? Why can't I quit? Everybody else is quitting. Uh, song leader ran off to the secretary and uh, made a scandalous life for themselves. And uh, my friends don't go to church on Sunday morning. Why can't I quit? And uh, why do I have to read my Bible? Why do I have to why do I have to tell people about Jesus? What is it anyway that I have to do? I want to read uh, just one verse, <coughs> excuse me, one verse of Scripture. This is from the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, and it's in verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that you labor is not in vain in the Lord. The Lord, therefore, is tying this verse to those 57 verses that come before it. Paul is addressing the church of Corinth in this particular letter. And as he writes to them, he gives us the very first reason that we ought to be faithful to the Lord. I want to read just uh, about five, five verses here. Moreover, brother, and I declare to you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ 
died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he rose again the third day, or that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And then he tells us about the eyewitnesses who saw Jesus. I want to tell you, the very first reason I can think of to be faithful to the Lord is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he tells us what the gospel is in these verses. He says, the gospel is the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Do you know that Jesus Christ died for our sins? But he didn't just die. He was buried. And how many of you can tell me what happened of this group right up here? How many of you can tell me what happened three days later? What happened three days after the crucifixion? Anybody in the group? Tell me what happened. All right, Grandpa, tell us. He came out of it. Amen. He came out of it, didn't he? He came out of the grave. That's a wonderful thing to know. That Christ died for our sins and he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scripture. That's the first reason that I need to be faithful to the Lord. Nobody else ever died for me. Nobody else ever rose from the dead for me. But Jesus did. Amen. And I'm not my own. I'm bought with a price. And the Bible says, therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit. In your God. I'm not my own. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. And we're to honor and glorify the Lord after we become a Christian. That's the first reason that we ought to serve the Lord, that be faithful to Him. Secondly, we ought to be faithful to the Lord because Jesus is alive in the believer today. In Philippians 2.13, the Word of the Lord says that uh, God places in us, it is God who works in us, both to will and to do of His good pleasure. John 15, 5, the word says, without me, Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Nothing of the Christian life. You can't do anything. But he says in Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In that Philippians 2, 13 verse that I quoted a moment ago, where it says, it is God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. I've got a glove here. I would like for it to pick up this Bible that's lying here before me, but the glove won't do it. I would like for this glove to adjust this mic and bring it up closer to my face, but the glove won't do it. I would like for this glove to uh, scratch this little guy's nose over here where it's, his nose is itching. I, I would like for that glove to do that. I'd like that glove to hold the comb and put my locks back in place. But the glove won't do it. What does this glove need? Perhaps we perhaps I ought to yell at it and scream at it, hey, you're no good club. You're gonna have to straighten up and fly right. You're supposed to be active and decent and so forth. All these boys and girls and grandmas and grandpas are watching you glove. Why don't you do what you're supposed to do? Maybe I'll just see that glove. I know what we all do. Let's paint it red, white, and blue. And that will make it do what it's supposed to do. What does this glove need? It needs a hand. Does So, what we do, we do what we should have done all the time. We put, it, put the glove in there. We can pick up the Bible. We can do all kinds of things. I can salute you. There are lots of things I can do with this glove because it has a hand in it. Now, what did we say a moment ago? Without me, Jesus said, you can do a little bit, you can do nothing. It is God which works in you both to will and to do. Listen, the first thing you need to do is to give your heart to Jesus. You don't even have the desire to please Him until you turn your life over to Him. And then you have the desire to do it, but not only that, He equipped you. He equipped you. Third 
reason not to be faithful is because Jesus is coming back again. That's what 1 Corinthians 15 tells us, that Jesus is coming again. It's going to be a wonderful time. Over 300 times in the New Testament, we're told that Jesus is coming again. Jesus spoke himself concerning it. He said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, where I am, where you may be also. The Bible tells us that uh, the disciples were out on the Mount of Olives as Jesus ascended into heaven following his, truth, his crucifixion and resurrection. And two men in shining apparel stood with the disciples and said, You men of Galilee, if I stand you gazing up into heaven, this same Jesus, which you've seen go into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. Jesus is coming again. Paul writes about it in his epistle. Peter writes about it in his. Jude writes about it. The, the biblical <coughs> write about the coming again of Jesus. And I don't know about you. I got a feeling some of these grandparents sitting here and feel the same way I do that it's near than it's ever been. Jesus is coming again. That's the reason I ought to be faithful to him. Blessed is that servant who, when his Lord shall come, shall find doing. The fourth reason that I ought to be faithful is found in verses 51 through 57. One of these days, I'll be raised from the dead. If I die before Jesus comes back, more than likely they'll bury me out somewhere. And when Jesus comes back, I'll be raised up out of the grave. My mother and dad are in Plano Baptist Church Cemetery. And uh, well, that's where their bodies are. When Jesus comes back, my dad, who had suffered a stroke, and my mother, who was uh, elderly, uh, they'll have brand new bodies. They'll be raised up out of the grave. And I've known some good people who died with arthritic hands and arms. I've known some people that had heart disease, died with all sorts of ailments. And one of these days, they're going to have a new body when Jesus comes back. But well, let me tell you something else. When Jesus comes back, what if we're alive in the rain when Jesus comes back? Well, we have to go through a resurrection. We'll be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. And we'll be caught up in what is called the rapture. We'll be taken up to meet the Lord. Yeah. Is that not a good reason to be faithful to the Lord? So, so everybody is dropping out. Does that mean you've got to drop out? So we come down to verse 58, and there's that word, therefore. Therefore, my beloved brother, because of the gospel of Jesus, because Jesus is alive in the believer, because Jesus is coming again, because of our resurrection and the rapture, because of that, we need to be faithful, my beloved brother. Be steadfast, like the, like the rock of Gibraltar. The rock of Gibraltar and the storms have beat against it through the ages. The rock of Gibraltar is steadfast. And the Bible tells us that the early Christians, they were steadfast. They studied the word steadfast and continued in the apostles' doctrine. Be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So that's the final reason, because of the promise that our labor it's not in vain. Somebody didn't recognize you for something you did? God is watching. He keeps a record. He knows what you've done. And one of these days, that will all come out the judgment seat of Christ. And you'll be proud if you remain faithful in the Lord Jesus Christ. Where does it begin? When you place your faith in Jesus Christ and trust in Him as your Savior. Where does it end? One day when you stand before the Lord and hear him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Do you bow with me in prayer? Father, thank you for your wonderful grace. Thank you for your love to us. Thank you for these grandchildren and grandparents here today. And that generation between the grandparents and the grandchildren those the moms and dads. Father, watch over this school. I pray for Brother Richard. Thank you, Lord, for him and 
is touching so many lives for so many years, touching them in so many ways, help them to know Christ.